So hopefully you've taken the time to do this. Let's see what we find. So here's our data set. We've got a number of variables and some demographic information. And so the first thing in order to determine the number of clusters that we need is we want to run the hierarchical cluster analysis. So we go to Analyze, Classify, Hierarchical Cluster. We include just the six attitudinal variables because that's what we're clustering on. We don't include age and gender, and we certainly don't include the ID number. So we put those in variables. For plots, we ask for the dendrogram. And for method, we make sure to use the wards method. And if we run this, we get the following dendrogram. And so it looks like either two or three clusters would be a reasonable solution. Let's go with three clusters just to see what we find. Now that we know that we have three clusters, we go to Analyze, Classify, K-Means. We include the exact same six variables. We say that we want three clusters. We're going to iterate a lot, so 100 times. And we're going to save the cluster memberships. And so we run this. And so what we get is this set of final cluster centers. Now again, just for simplicity's sake, I'll put this over into PowerPoint. And what we see is that cluster 1 has high representation on these three variables. Cluster 2 is low and low on these two, high on this one. And cluster 3 is high and high and low. And so if you go through this, you might find that the clusters are best described by these three different labels. So for instance, the first cluster is beauty focused. They like toothpaste that gives shiny teeth. They prefer toothpaste that freshens breath, and the most important consideration in buying a toothpaste is attractive teeth. The second category might be something like casual shoppers. They don't think it's important to buy toothpaste that prevents cavities, they don't think toothpaste should, sh should strengthen gums, and they do think that prevention of tooth decay is not an important benefit. So they're kind of like, they just buy toothpaste because they have to buy toothpaste. And the last category are the health-focused folks. They do think that it's important to buy toothpaste to prevent cavities that toothpaste should strengthen gums, and they disagree with the idea that prevention of tooth decay is not an important benefit offered by a toothpaste. So now that we have these three different clusters, we might want to see how their demographic characteristics vary. If we pop back into SPSS, we see we ha now have a new column. This is the cluster membership. Now one thing I like to do is actually rename this column. So if I go to variable view, I rename this and I call this something like cluster. And I also like to change the values to correspond to the cluster names that we came up with previously. Because this way, when I look at my data later on, I don't have to remember which one was cluster 1 and which one was cluster 2. I just have the value names. So I can click on values. And I say that value 1 represents my beauty focused. Value 2 represents my casuals. And value 3 represents my health focused. And so now, when I run my analyses, I'll see those labels instead of just the numbers. So first things first, let's see if gender varies as a function of cluster membership. And so if you recall, the way to do this is we're trying to compare two categorical variables. Cluster membership is categorical, group 1, group 2, or group 3. And gender is categorical, either male or female. And the way we do this is with a crosstab. So we go to Analyze, Descriptive Statistic, Crosstabs. And in one of these values, we're going to put cluster, and in the other we're going to put gender. In the statistics window, we're going to ask for the chi-square table, and for cells, we're going to ask for the row, the column percentages, as well as the standardized residuals. This is what we ask for every time we run a crosstab. And so we do this, and first of all, we do find right away, if we look at the Pearson chi-square, that there is a difference. In other words, gender does seem to vary as a function of cluster membership. Then we start looking at our table and things get a little bit messier, and that's largely because we have very, very small sample sizes. So if you recall, if we have too many cells with fewer than five individuals, we have a hard time interpreting the results. And here, in fact, we have two cells that have barely any people, another cell with five individuals, and so it's hard to figure out what's going on. Despite the fact that we have an overall effect, it's hard to identify exactly what that effect is. We can probably still take a look, but it would be hard for us to draw really solid conclusions. And looking at it, we see that there's a lot of females in the beauty category, about 88%, a lot of males in the casual category, and kind of split in the health-focused category. And so if we had more data, perhaps we could make a more general conclusion about the gender makeup of these different clusters. Now let's take a look at age. So for age, we have a categorical variable, cluster membership, 
and a continuous variable, age. In order to look at this, the tool that we can use is actually ANOVA. So we go to Analyze, General Linear Model, Univariate. In our fixed factor, that's our grouping factor, we just put the cluster membership. And in our dependent variable, we put the age. We're going to ask in options for the means for cluster membership as well as the descriptive statistics. And in post hoc, we're going to ask for the Bonferroni comparison on everything. In other words, we're going to compare every cluster to every other cluster. And that's it. And we run that. And so first things first, we find that cluster has an overall effect, meaning that at least one cluster differs from one other cluster in terms of the age of the individuals in that group. If we scroll down to our Bonferroni test, we see that the beauty category differs from the health category but the beauty category does not differ from the casual category. In fact, the only thing that's different is beauty versus health. And if we look at the ages, we see that the beauty individuals are the youngest, and the health individuals are the oldest, and the casual individuals are somewhere in the middle. So at best, what we can say is that those individuals in the beauty cluster are younger than those individuals in the health cluster. And so if I were reporting this, I would say something like this. I'd say we've got these three clusters with the following demographics. Now, of course, I could have a lot more demographic information, but we're not going to look at that in this case. One other question I asked you to look at is what happens if we force the situation to have two clusters? Now, I'm not going to go through the entire exercise. I'm just going to show you the results. On the left is what we had a moment ago. It's our three cluster solution. And on the right is this two cluster solution. What I want you to note is that these two columns are actually exactly the same. In other words, this particular solution yielded a situation where cluster one in the two cluster solution was cluster three in the three cluster solution. And clusters one and two over here in the three cluster solution comprised the individuals in this second cluster over here. And in fact, if you look at the sample sizes, you get the exact same thing. Cluster one is the same size as cluster three. These are the same 13 individuals. And the remaining 17 individuals were simply divided up into these two clusters. So that's what's going on with cluster analysis. Now, just a quick summary to wrap things up in cluster analysis. This is a tool that allows us to simplify information across respondents. Instead of saying that we've got 100 unique individuals, we can say we have two or three different groups of individuals. It's much easier to think about that and a whole lot easier to also act on it from a marketing and a business context. When this is used effectively, it can absolutely guide your marketing strategy and many of your business decisions. Nevertheless, it's not a pure computational science. Identifying how many clusters there are and labeling the clusters requires a bit of interpretation. This is both a strength because you have some flexibility, but it's also a weakness because whenever we introduce the human aspect into the mix, we can potentially bias our results. All that said, this is a very powerful tool that allows us to do the segmentation component of segmentation targeting and positioning automatically. Without having to just eyeball information, we can conclude how individuals group together and then we can make decisions based on that.